Hi, my name is Heidi Lestraco, and I am a speech language pathologist, an AAC consultant, and one of the creators of the Speak for Yourself AAC app. I wanted to talk to you today about touch accommodations in Speak for Yourself. We get this question pretty often from speech language pathologists and also sometimes from parents about their child using Speak for Yourself and hitting buttons over and over again and how to minimize that. And also for students who have some difficulty with fine motor and need a little bit longer to be able to um, purposefully touch a button. So if the iPad, if you're working with somebody or if your child is someone who is having a hard time because the iPad is just too sensitive, so they're touching things by accident instead of being able to pointedly say, this is the button I wanna touch, and then go into that. So that's what this little video is going to show you. Um, there are some accommodations that are actually built in to the iPad. So while I'm talking about touch accommodations in Speak for Yourself, if you're using a different app, or even if it's a um, an app like YouTube or something else in the iPad, if this kind of accessibility feature is helpful to your child or student that you're working with, then this is something that you can use for any iPad related app or function. Okay, so let me just show you what it looks like when you are in Speak for Yourself, and this is with no touch accommodations at all. So what we see sometimes is you have your little students who like to hit the same button over and over and over again really quickly to the point that it doesn't even have a chance to say the entire word. When I touch a button in this video, you're not going to hear the iPad speak because I have it set up so that um, the microphone, uh, you can hear what I'm saying since this is more of a more of a visual aid. But if I hit yes over and over again, it looks like this. And you see it just pops up into the window like that very quickly. And now I'm just going to say eat later just so you can see how quickly it goes from screen screen to screen. So as soon as I touch eat, it goes to the secondary screen and then I touch it again. So you see it's very fast and very sensitive, which for some users is a, a really excellent. And really for a lot of users, that's one of the things that they really say that they like about Speak for Yourself is being able to get to the vocabulary quickly. But of course, that's not true of everyone. So if you want to change the touch accommodations and if you want a little bit of a delay, for your child or student, this is what you would do. You would go into the settings of the iPad. So I'm just going to swipe up here so I can get into settings. And then to get to the touch accommodations, I'm just going to back up a little bit so you could see. Along the left-hand side, you would go into general. And then if you scroll down here, oh, I'm sorry. If you could, and then go into accessibility. So you go from general then to accessibility. And then if you scroll down here, you see all of your um, different accessibility features that are built into the iPad. This, it, it used to, they've really done a lot to improve this. This used to not be an effective way to control touch accommodations within an app. But if you go into here now and touch, touch accommodations, do you see where you can turn them on up here? So touch that. And then you're also going to go to hold, you can go to hold duration or you can go to ignore repeat. So in that example that I was giving where it was going, where I was hitting the button over and over again, you can control that so that a student's not able to do that by going to ignore repeat. The other thing that you can do is go into hold duration. So you see I have that turned on and I have it turned on to 0.15 seconds. I really think that what the iPad does is it rounds up. So when it says 0.15 seconds, it's really 0.2 seconds. Um, but I, the only reason, I, and I'll show you why I, I think that in a second. But So once you do that, then you can say, okay, I'm done. And then you can scroll up here and go back in to speak for yourself. Now you see I had to kind of hold that a little bit longer. So one of the things when you go in there and you change the touch accommodations and you touch change the hold duration. What you're going to also notice is that anything you touch in the iPad, you have to hold for that whole duration. So if you want to go into an app, if you want to um, select a song on YouTube, you're going to have to do that. So now when I go in here and I touch eat really fast, it doesn't happen. It, I mean, it doesn't, 
it doesn't activate that button. So I'm going to do it fast a lot of times and watch at the top. Do you see it says touch and hold for at least 0.2 seconds before a touch is recognized? So it kind of gives you that little prompt. So if you're working with a student and it seems like the iPad's a little bit um, delayed, then that it, they may have touch accommodations on. Now in order to do it, when I want to touch eat, I have to put my finger there and hold it. So I really have to place my finger on that and set and, and hold it down a little bit. So it really does help, you know, if a child is really, um, like I said, having a hard time where they're activating buttons by accident. The other thing to remember about this is that if you're in guided access, you can actually put um, touch accommodations on a shortcut along with guided access. So if you wanna be able to turn touch accommodations off for when you're moving within the iPad, you can do that through that same shortcut of where you hit the home button three times. And do you see when I do that, it gives me the accessibility shortcut. So it's asking me if I wanna go into guided access or if I wanna do something with the touch accommodations. So I would be able to, if I selected touch accommodations, it would disable, it's going to disable the whole duration that I just set. And of course, if I go into guided access, it's going to put my, it's going to put speak for yourself into guided access. So I hope this was helpful and I'm really thankful that Apple has this kind of accommod these kind of accessibility fe features built in and I hope that you find it helpful for your child or student. Thank you.